Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Well, it's been 20 years since I've seen this movie. And 20 years that I had to waste my time with. And, and I had to say, I was never impressed by this movie. I was never a big fan of it. And frankly, I hated it ever since I've seen it when I was a kid. But I'll tell you this though, it makes it one of the worst masterpieces I've ever seen. And that has to be the one I'm going to be reviewing today called The Good Son. Yep, that's right, The Good Son, which, <laughs> yeah, like there really is a good son. Well, I can tell one is, but okay, I'm, I'm not going to waste my time. But it's The Good Son that stars Macaulay Culkin, Elijah Wood, David Morse, Wendy Crewson, Quinn Cogan, Daniel Hugh Kelly, and Jacqueline Brooks. And I just find it shocking to believe because the director of this movie, by the name of Joseph Rubin, had directed the movie Dreamscape, which stars Dennis Quaid, as a character who invades people's nightmares in order to save people from them. Yeah, it's basically the type of movie you really want to see. Especially the scene with the snake man and of course the scene with the construction worker being stuck and he was about to fall. That was one of my favorite movies as a kid. And, and it happens to be the second film to give it a PG-13 rating after Red Dawn. Yeah, came out in 1984. A few years later he directed the movie called The Stepfather, the original film, with Terry O'Quinn who later appeared in the TV show Lost. And yes, he's a very good actor too. Happens to be one of the best thrillers ever made back in the 80s, which eventually spawned you know, a few sequels. Most of which he had been in. Yeah, it was a great movie. I really enjoyed it. I guess part of this genre that he was doing with the horror genre started with Sleeping with the Enemy with Julia Roberts and Patrick Bergen along with Kevin Richardson. And while I have to admit it is sort of an intriguing thriller, it does have some problems. So I gotta admit the whole idea of an abusive husband becoming a neat freak. Yeah, he wants to get everything all neatly so he doesn't uh, drive himself so crazy. Ever since he directed that movie, you know, he's been getting worse and worse as years follow. Because that's when the movie The Good Son came along. I just didn't like this movie at all. It, it was stupid, ridiculous, pointless, predictable. Uh, just a totally waste of time. Uh, followed by a cliffhanger ending. It just pisses me off so much. I just totally hated this movie a lot. And trust me on this one, it's even worse than the movie Mikey. The 1992 film with Brian Bonstall. Yes, and I'll tell you one thing, it's, it's far from worse. It's a terrible film. Yeah, because back in the 90s we were getting movies sort of like this too. About kids becoming psychopaths. I guess they're trying to follow in the tradition of the movie The Bad Seed. Yeah, one of the uh, earlier films um, that came out in the 50s, I believe. That started the whole trend of, uh, of kids becoming psychopaths. It's just totally unpleasant to watch. Although The Bad Seed was a good film, though, at least. But it doesn't work in the 90s, that's for sure. Or any other year. Because <laughs> we had a movie called The Orphan. And, huh, I'm telling you, I, I'm totally not a big fan of these movies. They, they just totally suck. But anyway, and as ridiculous as this plot is, it definitely has the writing of a bad TV movie of the week type. And, and it just didn't work at all. I didn't buy the whole thing whatsoever, but I'm going to get to it to see how stupid this writing is. Because I'm shocked to say that the screenwriter of this went on to do the movie in 2007 called Atonement. So 
So yeah. Well, let's get back to it. The movie begins when a 12-year-old kid by the name of Mark Evans, played by Elijah Wood, who just found out that his mother has been diagnosed with cancer. And unfortunately, um, she was dying very rapidly um, at a hospital in Arizona. Unfortunately, he made a promise that his mother wouldn't die. And by the time the next day follows, she actually did pass away. Unfortunately, Mark is feeling very consumed with his grief and also guilt-ridden because he couldn't keep his promise to her. And that's what made him feel so guilty about that. But shortly after that, uh, Mark's father, Jack, played by David Morris, is assigned to take a two-week business trip to Tokyo, Japan in order to close a business deal, thinking that the blessedy main environment would do Mark some good. So Jack leaves Mark with, with Jack's brother, Wallace Evans, in Maine while Jack is on his trip. Wallace and his wife, Susan, has a son that's about Marx's age named Henry and an eight-year-old daughter named Connie, both of which are played by Macaulay Colgan and his real-life younger sister, Quinn Colgan. Yeah, that's right, because I guess they knew they wanted the Colgans to be in this mess of a movie. Yeah, go figure. They have also announced that Wallace and Susan's three-year-old son, Richard, actually had died by drowning in the bathtub a few months ago. At first, Mark and Henry get along great, but Mark begins to notice that Henry's ideas of fun differ significantly from his own. Henry threatens to topple Mark from a 15-meter treehouse, which eventually shows the part where he says his line, I'll let you go. You think you could fly? <laughs> Stupid. Then Henry, of course, showed uh, Mark his own dummy that he made named Mr. Highway. Yeah, a dummy that looks exactly like Wilson from the TV show Home Improvement. Eventually, Henry drops the dummy from an overpass onto the highway, causes a, a huge 10 car piled up accident that leads up to it, including an RV, a truck so many cars involved it was just so so fucked up all the way around suddenly they had a news report about this and they're trying to pick up about what's going on in this collision unfortunately as far as this movie is concerned no one actually had done an investigation about the dummy and that's how fucked up the scene was but later henry uses his homemade crossbow to kill the neighbor's dog at first he was doing a target practice on killing the cat, which is stupid. <laughs> I know, I, I hate it when they do this shit in these movies. When they always have to kill an animal and it, it's just totally not right. But also Hendry knows that, that Richard's drowning was not an accident. But Hendry's perfect son for Kate is so convincing that no one believes in Mark, not even his psychiatrist which makes it even more worse than ever before because everyone was convinced that Mark is just acting out of the trauma of his mother's death but Mark knows that Henry drowned Rich in a fit of jealousy because it seems that to Henry that Susan and Wallace were giving Richard the most attention also Mark believes that his mother has been reincarnated in Susan and makes the mistake of telling Henry about it Fueled by more jealousy than ever before, Henry's reign of terror escalates, and he hints to Mark that he plans to kill Connie, his sister, for the same reason why he killed Richard. But even after Connie survives a suspicious thin ice skating accident, Mark fears are dismissed, and then Susan discovers Henry's secret playhouse and she finds the rubber ducky that was missing from Richard's bath for the day of the drowning. Now that Susan knows the truth, will he be able to save his nephew or his own son? And that leads to bigger problems with this entire stupid plot of a movie. 
because I just couldn't believe how stupid this plot really is and how stupid the story was written because I couldn't buy the whole plot about what was going on. I knew the fact that that Henry was one of the biggest problems of the film and that's just pretty much what ruined the whole movie experience for me. Because as much as I love Macaulay Culkin, I didn't buy the fact that he was a convincing killer and that was just what made it up for the fact that he had to spout out his lines such as don't fuck with me or or any of these stupid lines that he comes up with oh mark so violent i mean this is a poorly written script i couldn't believe it that he took the job for this mess and along with her sister quinn it was just stupid Elijah Wood is probably the only good actor who can actually play a role like this, but the sad part is the execution of it all, of this ridiculous screenplay, which made him worse. But if you think of it this way, he was the only good thing about the movie, nevertheless. The parents of this movie are just a bunch of cookie cutter characters that you often see in these really bad TV movie of the week types. Like I had to mention, the psychiatrist was a bitch. I didn't believe in a psychiatrist because she doesn't even listen most of the time. It's like she doesn't even believe in evil. It's ridiculous. The, the father didn't do it for me either. It's just her typical father. The uncle was, was a jerk. I mean, I couldn't believe how much of a jerk he was. Um, I totally did not believe in, in Aunt Susan as the reincarnation of the mother or what it seems to be. <laughs> because to me, it just... It totally ruined out of place. You know, and plus, I had to say, Wendy Crewson probably has one of the worst actings in movie history because, yeah, this is the same actress who played the divorce mother in the movie The Santa Claus that following year. There are a bunch of stupid scenes about her, you know, such as the scene where where Mark was trying to convince Susan that Henry is a bad influence to the family. And what do you get in these movies? Is this. Stop it! That's a lie! Seriously! Do I need to see that crap? In movies like this? Exactly. And, and also the worst part about this movie though, was the cliffhanging scene. Once they found out the truth about this, what do you get? A scene where both of them starts to fight. Uh, Macaulay Culkin throws a huge boulder yeah, a huge rock. Oh boy, this is so messed up. Trying to threaten to kill her mother, Susan. Who just pushed her in, into the cliff after pretending that he died. So you get the scene where Susan tries to carry both Elijah Wood, you know, character Mark, and Macaulay Cogan's character, Henry. And guess what? Henry dies. He falls all the way down into the, the ground. And, yep, he lays there, all the way dead. And then we get the, the end narration where he says, And Henry's gone, and the all kids are safe. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this was such a terrible movie. From beginning to end. And I'm so ashamed that to see two good actors being stuck in a wasted script like this. But all I had to say, though, is that after this movie... Macaulay Culkin's career hasn't been improving very well. Well, I, I have to admit, I did love the Page Master and Richie Rich. And to be fair, I did enjoy getting even with Dad. His career hasn't been the same since. Oh, also, the, the Nutcracker was another one, but that didn't do much for me. But, yeah. Since then, he hasn't been in movies ever since because he decided to quit uh, acting. But that was his choice, of course. So, and um, meanwhile, Elijah Wood had another movie called North, um, which unfortunately a lot of people hated. But I'll tell you which is worse: this movie or The Good Son. I say The Good Son was worse. But I have to admit, I, I had to be fair. I didn't think North wasn't that bad, in my opinion. But of course, Elijah Wood went on to bigger and better things such as the Lord of the Wings trilogy and many others. So it's good to see that he's still acting. He's also in the TV show called Willard 
which is on FX. So it's really improving. But I gotta admit, though, it did have some beautiful landscapes that they had in the film that, that went from Arizona to Maine. Um, it does look beautiful. I agree with those shots that they have. But it just couldn't cut it one bit. Although, I actually did notice that the, the treehouse scene that they had in the movie, uh, believe it or not, though, was actually filmed in Maryland. Um, shocking to believe because I just saw a video of, of uh, Sean showing in the location where they filmed the treehouse. And I'm shocked to believe that is the same treehouse that they use in the movie. And, but other than that, though, it was so ridiculous. I just couldn't believe I had to sit for this mess. It's been a long time since I've last seen this movie, and I couldn't believe how long it took me, because it took me 20 years, 20 fucking years, to sit for this mess again. And it didn't change my mind a bit. It was a terrible movie. So anyway, I give The Good Son zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.